Here's tip number two for using your tuner. In this case, I'm going to turn the camera around, so this is the last time you'll see my face, but I hope you can stand that. I'm going to start by doing the blind test that I talked about in a previous tip, where I close my eyes, play my B-flat, then open them and see how it looks. That shows me slightly low. I'll push the slide in just a bit. Okay, we'll settle for that pitch. What I'm going to do next is try to figure out ways where I don't play quite that well in tune on that very same note. So I'm going to try to play it short and loud first. So as you can see there, the tendency was not to play it up to pitch. When I'm going louder, I'm letting it go flat. That's not a good thing. So I need to compensate for that. So knowing the tendency, I can aim for a better center on that B-flat. I'm going to try the same thing with a short note, but this time a soft note. That's not too bad there. Next I'll try it with a loud note held a little bit longer. That's pretty good. I can adjust it as I need to, depending on what I'm hearing at the time. Now I'll try a soft note held longer. That's also good. I'm going to change notes now because that B flat is right in the center of the instrument's range and it's a pretty comfortable note to play. But I'm going to move it up a fifth to a concert F, which is a written G in treble clef. The Adams is pretty well in tune on that note, so I don't have to adjust the way I might have on some other horns. But what happens if I play it softer on that high F? You can see the pitch wandering sharp as I play softer, especially as I hold the note. That's a problem with my chops. Obviously the instrument's not changing during that time. And I wouldn't want to adjust my tuning slide, because I'd have to be doing that constantly during a single note. So I need to learn to control that pitch center better when I'm playing softly. That's where long tone practice can really help, especially if you're using a tuner while you do it. Now I'll try that same F, but at a louder volume, long. Pretty close and not too hard to control. Try a short note now at a forte. Not too bad, but again, it tends to go a little bit sharp. I'll try a short note, softly. As you can see, it's not terribly consistent. So that, again, indicates a good place to practice. Playing short notes with a tuner and trying to center them every time right on the attack. Often in what we play, there are a series of short notes. And if they wander in pitch very much at all, you kind of lose the context of a line or a chord that you're spelling out with those notes. As we're talking about context, we'll start moving now, looking at the last note we play, but finding out different ways to get there. I'll start with my tuning B-flat. I'll do what my college band used to do when we wanted to tune. I'll play three notes leading up to that B-flat. <laughs> Now I'll try that on a single note, same volume, just to double check myself. Okay, that was pretty good. Next I'm going to try to come down to that note. I'll start on the high F and just slur immediately down to the B flat. You can see I scooped into it a little bit when I come down, which means I'm not really comfortable quite on the B-flat until I've had a second to lock into it. I'll see if I can do it more immediately. To 
get it even that close, I have to change how I slur a little bit. So again, there's where context is really affecting how the note sounds. This time I'll come down more scale-wise. In that case, I had to be careful not to be sharp. As I've demonstrated, changing the context in which I play a note can change how the intonation is. That's important to know, first of all, what your tendency is, but it's also important then to practice and to try and improve that tendency. We would prefer a given note, say that B flat I played, to be in tune whether it's the first note that I play, the last note of an ascending scale, the last note of a descending scale, or the final note of a slur. Wouldn't it be nice if it was in tune in all those contexts? I find that's a very useful way to use the tuner because it gets at the various ways you play a note. Sometimes you play it long, sustained, sometimes loud, sometimes soft, sometimes short, and so on. And the tuner may show you that they're not always the same depending on volume and context. So it's good to get control in all those situations or at least know where your tendencies are. I find this tip very helpful for me and it assumes that you've already tuned the instrument with the blind test that I showed you earlier. So the instrument on the tuning note is well in tune. Then beyond that point you want to make sure the instrument's in tune in various contexts when you're playing soft or loud, short or long, and so on. It's very helpful because that is the way you play the horn in real music. Thanks for listening.